Hi everybody, welcome back. Watch this time, I haven't done one in for bloody ever. Trying to do a bumper edition. Let's do six films this this week. Hi everybody, welcome back to the channel. Watch list is where I tell you what I've been watching that I consider to be interesting or to be recommended. I'd pick six titles that I've seen that I think stand out from different labels and to try and give you an idea of What's, what's interesting or what's around? Like I say, I'm going to do, I normally do five, but I'm going to do six because it's been so long. I'm going to start with one that came up actually uh, in conversation on Graham's Mamby film Discord server. Conversation there about a film that one person started talking about it, then somebody else watched it, then somebody else watched it, etc. And says, you know, this is pretty good, you should watch it. It is The Hidden. Uh, this is the premium collection edition. And The Hidden is a 1987 science fiction movie that, that starts off basically where somebody walks in and rubs a bank and kind of causes all carnage and mayhem around him. And it's basically said that it's very out of character for this person as they go for a the case, they end up in the hospital, etc. Out of character doesn't seem to be what this person is and what you end up getting is a sort of thing like sci-fi movie where you have this mixture of practical effects and the invasion of the body and the taking over of the body and of the sense and you get a very, as is usual with these kind of things a really playful look the essence of soul all that kind of stuff but really within a science fiction contest of blood and guts and horror uh, it's great fun i really enjoyed it. i really liked the push to watch it. It was one of those ones, they started talking about it and I was like, oh, I'll have to get that. And of course, I looked at my shelf just before I went to buy it and went, ah, idiot. But a good watch, it certainly was. And I should also say, that it's a pretty good performance from, well, amongst others, uh, Kyle MacLachlan as the FBI agent who's on the hunt for this sting. And he does his usual cookie self of being, you're not quite sure who he is, what he is. What side he's on, kind of his background, all that kind of stuff, which gives him that kind of extra bit of mystique. Next up, making my way through my backlog of Arrow Academy stuff. Do anybody remember Arrow Academy? It used to be a pretty good label. But one of the films that I had there is something that was sort of considered to be very well thought of when I, when I went to look for it. It's The Train. Um, from about 1962, I believe... 1964, tell a lie, it does. Burt Lancaster and John Frankenheimer's Story of the Train. A film set at the end of World War II where the German are Germans are trying to get away with a lot of the uh, artistic masterpieces that are in France at the moment. They're going to load them up on a train and the French resistance, so the people within the French resistance are trying to stop them leaving the country uh, and sabotage that by fair means or foul. And it's all shot in a very gorgeous black and white and, and the film has a real look and style to it. The only thing that doesn't really fit with it in terms of being, making it feel French is Burt Lancaster himself. He, he plays the part very well, but it, it definitely just feels like an American interpretation of a, of, a, of a French kind of setting rather than feeling authentic in, in that kind of way. I, I can see why it's very highly considered and very highly thought of. It's, um, it's got lots of drama, lots of twists and spills, and, and uses the... The t ticking time bomb of the end of, the, of World War Two very much to its advantage and to the idea that, that if they can just hold on long enough, all will be saved, even though it's really just about art paintings, at least at the outset. A really interesting watch. Uh, this version has a, an audio comedy by Frankenheimer himself and then a, an interview with a Lanc uh, Lancaster biographer talking about him and his how kind of much of a draw Burt Lancaster was at times and uh, how he, you know, his very force, everybody wanted Burt Lancaster to star in their films at the time. Really interesting interview and watch and a really terrific film. Next up is something that was a lot less lauded and is part of well, Arrow's output at the latter part of this year that is somewhat, people were giving it the old eye roll for most of the time. This one is a, a TV movie that they've then on a restoration of or otherwise and put it out on disc. It's The Initiation of Sarah. Now, The Initiation of Sarah tells the story of two sisters, one an adopted sister, who are going to university uh, and are going to enlist in the rat houses bit. Except one of the sisters is very much following the footsteps of her mother and being like the, the, the snobbish, beautiful girl house. And the other sister 
is the kind of tawdry, you know, a bit more awkward, but they have a very close relationship between the two of them. So now it doesn't take a genius to work out that one gets into the house, one doesn't. And that's really where we set off in terms of our story because it turns out that the other sister, the one that didn't get in, has some sort of almost carry like powers that kind of psychopathic ability to move and control objects and things and uh, that's set up very early on early on and it's really about you know the legacy of finding out about her as a person and the characters and the people that are involved in both uh, sides of the divide those within the popular frat house those within the kind of geeky weird frat house that the other sister ends up in and you get something that ends kind of explosively uh, i really thought initiation of sarah would in that kind of interesting horror filled 70s 80s kind of vibe that, that you got you get some really good performance i mean morgan fairchild's in in this in, in an early role and we get we get generally a high level of performance especially for what would be considered a tv movie at the time something that i think bears up very well it has a really nice set of extras in it too it is an audio commentary by amanda reyes always very good an appreciation of the film which i think for a film like this when they get reappraised later on off the date and kind of say well actually why was this good why was this interesting i think those always work very well in the context of of modern cinema and modern cinema releases and then you have visual essays by Alexander Heller Nicholas about it, etc. I think this is a perfect example of what Arrow could and should be doing a lot. I think this is a terrific release that they picked up. A really good presentation of it. And one that I actually will be very glad that going forward. Initiation of Sarah. Pretty good. Next up is a Criterion release. And one that was recommended by a number of people to me. And this is, well, a directorial debut, I believe, for this actor come director. This is Buck and the Preacher. Uh, and Sidney Poitier is the man who's the director, but also stars in it here with Harry Belafonte. And Buck and the Preacher is a western, a black western, if if, if you want, that tells the story of uh, a group of people that have been unsettled after slavery who are trying to find their way, kind of looking after themselves, and they're kind of headed by Sidney Poitier's character. And they he comes across, and as he's trying to evade the law for some of the things that he's trying to do, he comes across Harry Belafonte's character and he steals his horse and Harry Belafonte is a, is a preacher and their paths end up crossing again and they form an unlikely sort of alliance or, or friendship where they bounce off each other all the while when the white man is trying to hunt them down and they're caught on the barrier the breakdown of kind of Native American society where they're trying to fight their corner and hold their line and also the white man's trying to expand his horizons and his borders and take control of the land around him and these people are just trying to get from safety where they are to work. it's it's a it's a really good film to start off with but actually within the context of the extras etc that, that are that are supplied with it you get an idea actually that this isn't just totally fantastical you get a side of western life that you don't normally hear about about the relocation of a lot of slaves and a lot of people that uh, were trying to make a life for themselves and couldn't and found it difficult and also about there's a great scene within the film about in the native american side and how their opinion of all of this conflict was going along uh, it, it's it's a really interesting political kind of movie insofar as the time that it came out and the events that were happening in america around that time and i, I think it's a pretty great example of the fur that criterion i think do best Giving you a film that is one under scene and deserves a new restoration and a new reappraisal, but also given a political context, given it kind of talking about the motivations of the people that were in there and about actually the weird and wonderful relationship of Poitier and, and Belafonte themselves and the fact that they may or may not have really gotten on, especially not just on this film, but over a longer period of time as two very prominent people representing black people within the entertainment industry at the time. Fascinating release. Next one up is kind of the very opposite end of the scale from that, and it is a Vinegar Syndrome release, so it has been released in Idiot Films as well. And it's a release of uh, Yang Biao in a uh, Maggie Chung in The Iceman Cometh. Now, this is just fabulous setup in terms of a kung fu movie. You have kind of dynasty, end of the Chinese dynasty kind of thing where. You've got a guy that's uh let's not let's say not being nice to other women within the world and he's 
been sent to hunt after by you know Yang Biao's character um, he's going to take him out and hunt them to the ends of the earth to make sure that the kingdom is safe and kind of make sure that the dynasty is safe all that kind of stuff but in doing so they get trapped in ice and are only and are transported actually it's not really the um, Captain America scenario of they just lay on ice for that long they get transported through time uh, to modern society and to a place where they're like fish out of water but actually unbeknownst to each other both are able to adapt to various degrees in modern society. Yan Biao with the help of Maggie Chung's character who is a sort of call girl but not call girl she keeps telling everybody um, and you know a lot of this is played for laughs insofar as Yan Biao doesn't know where to get water from well, there's a lot of like, like literally toilet humour in this uh, but it's sort of whimsical and funny and all of that kind of stuff that goes with it and and you know this is this is great fun like super great fun did for somebody that's watched a lot of kung fu movies as many of us have over the past year and you think god is there anything new that can come from this kind of stuff this is this is it uh when you take that sprinkling a bit of humor it's probably makes it a bit long because it does that but also i don't think you ever really get bored as you know you're kind of fighting for the good guy to win out at the end of the day um you get a pretty stacked release it comes with it there's even i even watched there's uh two releases of it on this release i think also in the idiot release as well there's an extended cut i watched the extended cut that is two hours and two minutes long um it's only seven minutes more but i thought it was worth watching but you've got commentaries and, and so iceman cometh if you've kind of felt a bit sick of kung fu releases over the most recent while and you want to sum the fresh it up but still like the idea of the action etc it's in there i think iceman cometh's a pretty good departure from all of that say young Ma as the body particularly great as well some great maniacal laughing in this i think maniacal laughing is underrated and last up an absolute stunner for at least and god here we go again talking about second sight this might win artwork of the year if i was to do it this is boiling point uh lovely picture stephen graham here in the front uh, and boiling point is a sort of lockdown just before the advent of lockdown made movie that was released obviously after the point and it tells a story in like a one-shot style of a guy who owns his own restaurant uh and kind of having a, a bad day at the office and that's stephen graham himself that does this so it, it basically is a one-shot movie proper one shot movie not those kind of ones where they do the little cuts everything had to be corkscrewed and actually that's one of the great things that appears in this when they talk about the extras and they're talking about doing it they were really up against the point where the government were going to shut everything down and they in theory could have just kept on doing one shots until they got the take that they wanted but actually they knew at any second they we're going to pull the curtain down on them and stop them doing it it's a phenomenally affecting drama of one man's struggle and how it affects all the people around him and i think the restaurant and the kitchen as as a setting gives you a sense of kind of family but not as family if that makes sense so the people that are affected by his approach to the world how he deals with people and all of that good stuff but not actually having the relatable parts of his family which do make an appearance through phone calls he's a man kind of in a change of life all of that plays a part into the drama that gets played in here and the stakes that are in there and in some cases you can you can feel what's going to happen and then it plays out and maybe even better or worse than you thought about you can see the volatile nature of the character both in terms of the heat of the kitchen and the relationships that happen in there and there's just i mean i would say the level of acting performance right across the board is exactly what gives us its real power not just in terms of christine graham himself who's always terrific but in terms of the surrounding cast, there's even a bit at the start where the health inspector's in. He just absolutely steals the show, probably. Even though he's only in it for five minutes at the start, he's absolutely terrific. And you get a disc that's full of, you know, the producers, the writers, the director, all talking about the production itself. The only person we don't really hear from is Stephen Graham, although he appears in a couple of the, he make, appears in the making of the documentary, uh, talking to the cast and crew an awful lot. And it's just an absolutely fabulous release. Hard cards as usual got our booklet the booklet's excellent as well really enjoyed reading the booklet another fabulous 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 second sight release this year i feel like a broken record over the past couple of weeks in the end of the year i maybe didn't talk about them enough at the start of the year I'm making up for it now and that is my watch list for the past
I hope you got something out of it. If you've seen any of these, please let me know. And if there's anything akin to this that, that kind of falls alongside it, please let me know about those. I hope you've had a great start of the new year here in 2023. And if you've stuck around this long, thank you very much for watching. I'll catch you next time on Watch Left. Take care.